first service with the Larry Stevenson band, I preached. Not a long message because I know you're going to love that. You're going to love that I'm not long today, but anyway. But it's going to be powerful, encouraging. My message coming up is how to make your last days your best days. And it's a little bit of a break between the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I've done two. We're going to do the black horse next week, and we'll continue that series in Revelation in Matthew chapter 24 and 25. But it's, and it's a great series. God's been blessing us good. He always does. Always blesses His Word. But uh, today, a little encouraging word uh, after the band does their thing. Amen? If it's your first time at Fellowship, I'm Pastor Gary. I know already you're impressed with me. <laughs> you know, people, that's never their first impression. It's like, he don't wear a tie. He's heavy. He's bald. He talks funny. At least you met me and not plastic man. Amen say. Now I want you to be you today. If you're here for your first time, how about you just be you and just relax and be glad that you're in the house of the Lord today. Amen. And you're with people that are good people that love you. You don't know them, but I'm telling you, they're good folks. And uh, we started this church about almost 20 years ago in my house. It's crazy. Everything you see is debt free. We did it without cheating people. And God's just been good to us, amen? It's hard work. Everything's work, right? If it's going to be something good, it's going to take work. But it's been a blessing, amen? So we're just thrilled today. Yeah, praise the Lord. I love that. Come on, man. Come on. Our band, Saltwater's here today. Do have uh, my son and daughter's not here with us this morning, but we got a great team. That's what's nice about having such a big, big crew up here. We got one song. It has a little bit of a bluegrass feel to it, greater. And uh, we want you all to go ahead and get on your feet. We're getting ready, getting ready. Come on, here we go. They're going to just do one song for us, lead us in some worship, and then we're going to have Larry Stevenson Band come out after some announcements. Pretty good crowd today, amen. And it's a big crowd first service, so uh, we're glad you're here today. Now you're going to hear, you're going to think, hearing me talk like I do right now, and then when the Larry Stevenson Band, you're going to think you've been like transported back to the mountains of North Carolina. That's what's going to happen today. You're going to think it. Matter of fact, I got some North Carolina mountain people sitting right here. Is that correct? Is that true right there? Amen. So it's, it's the real deal today, baby. All live instruments today. You'll see it. They're going to burn them up in just a bit. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Thank God you live in America. Come on. Don't give up on your country. You live for Christ. You shine that light. You do right. Amen. Let's make Inglewood, Port Charlotte, Venice the best part of America right here, baby. When people come here, they're going to get love. They're going to hear about Jesus Christ, and we're not ashamed of him. Amen? Come on. So we're thrilled to see you. Good to have you here today. And Pastor, I mean, um, Richard, good to see you, buddy. How you doing? I've been missing you. I've been missing you. You're a delight. I haven't seen you for a couple of years, have I? Did I really? Okay, I'm getting old, sir. But yeah, but I ain't seen you like I used to. No, I know with things going on, but I just appreciate you. I want, you to, I want to tell you that without you getting away today, okay? Guys, one more time. Let's just thank the Lord we're in church. Here we go. Now we're getting ready. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Are you ready? Can we make sure that their mics are up a little bit low this morning? I want to make sure that Joel and Sherry and the girls are up so we can hear you sing. Amen. Come on. Here we go. It's called Greater. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Bring your time. Come on. Bring your shame. It's easy. Bring, bring your, your guilt. guilt. Bring, bring your pain. Come on. Don't you know? not your name you will always be much more than me and every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right come on church that's alright cause I hear a voice and he calls me with me when others say I'll never be enough greater
Bring your hurt, bring your tears. There'll be no condemnation here. You are holy, righteous, and redeemed. And every time I fall, there'll be those who call me in this day. Well, that's okay. Appreciate your band this morning. That's all we get out of them. That's it. Amen. But next week they'll be uh, they'll be ready to roll. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad you're here. Again, if you just came in, that's okay. If you're watching online, we're thrilled to have you. Send us a note if you're online. Just tell us where you're watching from, or just give us an encouraging word, or maybe thank the staff that's making all that online stuff happen right now. They can use some encouragement from you as well. Amen. But glad you're here. I'm Pastor Gary. If you just walked in. And we have coming up the Larry Stevenson Band. I don't do it every week. I do it about three, four times a year. And I uh, got a bluegrass band. And they're one of the best ones when it comes to smooth bluegrass sounds. They've uh, certainly been around, played at the Grand Old Opry and things like that. A lot of times you'd be paying a ticket to hear them. And because uh, it's, just, it's just good music. Amen. And the mandolin picker, he's going to pick that banjo picker. Forget about it. It's happening in just a bit. Amen. But it's gospel music this morning. They play all kinds of music, bluegrass, but today they're going to do a, just a gospel music concert for you, amen? And I think you'll enjoy them. Glad you're here today. It wouldn't be worth anything if you weren't here. So we appreciate you. Appreciate you, amen? Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us first. Thank you for loving us in our sin. Thank you for never throwing us out with the trash. Thank you for showing us Jesus that you're coming and dying on a cross and raising from the dead. Thank you for showing us that we matter, we matter, we matter to you, that we have value. You love us. Lord, thank you for that message, that powerful message that you demonstrated your love for us while we were sinners. Jesus, you died for us. Lord, I pray not one will leave lost today. Help us be humble today. Help us to get with the program today that there's no way our goodness can ever be good enough to gain heaven. But it's you, Jesus, who paid that price. You died on the cross, sinless, spotless Lamb of God for us. 
please help us humble ourselves today. Everyone, no one needs to leave lost today. None of us have to go to hell, not one. So help us today, Lord. Help us to believe in you, to put our faith and trust in you, Jesus, and reject every other false way. You're the way, the truth, the life. You tell us plain and straight, nobody can come to the Father but by you. Lord, I pray it'll happen today. Help us, Lord, today to bow at your feet, to worship you today. And we love you, Lord. We love you today because how, how much you've loved us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, guys. Be seated if you would. Thank you. Mr. Alexander Christie has a boatload of stuff going on, man. I appreciate it. There you go, buddy. Thank God you. bless you. Love you. Appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Glad you all are here. Thank you for being here at Fellowship Church. You started your week off right here with us, and we greatly appreciate it. If today's your first time here, Please do us a favor and fill out that guest registry right there on the worship guide you got when you came in. Or you can meet us at the Welcome Center um, after, the, after the concert today so that we can get some information from you so we can send you a note of encouragement this week as well as give you a little gift bag with some information in it, uh, some sunglasses, pens, note, a little notepad, just some fun stuff in there. And uh, we're not going to call you. We're not going to bother you. We just want, also want to send you a postcard whenever a big event is coming up. And good morning, everyone online. Thank you so much for tuning in and, and watching us this morning. Uh, do us a favor. Send us a Facebook message or an email, and we'll do the same thing for you. This evening, our middle school and our high school ministries meeting right here at the church at 5 o'clock. So if you know anyone in that age group, please invite them. This is an awesome time for kids to get together, learn about the Lord. Get encouraged, get, get taught how much they matter, Amen. and uh, they'll feed them physically, they'll feed them spiritually, and it'll be a fun blessing for these kids. Amen. So anyone, middle school, high school, please invite them tonight, 5 o'clock, right here at the church. And we've got lots of Bible studies going on here at Fellowship Church. You can check them out right there in your worship guide that you got when you came in. Um, and we just want you to plug in. If you haven't checked out one of them yet, please do so. You're missing out on a great opportunity. And our friend to friend meets here every Tuesday right here at Fellowship Church. If you or somebody you know is looking for, to make some new friends, to grow in the Lord by developing fellowship with people, with other people that believe, um, and also just want to encourage each other, you could be lonely, you could be just looking for some new friends. So come on out every single Tuesday right here at Fellowship Church, our friend to friend group. And then Fun Night Done Right is coming up on Tuesday. This Tuesday uh, at, at Fellowship Church's old offices down over um, on Godfrey Creek, 1460 South McCall Road, uh, right there on the first floor. This is for middle school students, and they have a special guest speaker this month, Elise Clark Rodriguez, who is Pastor Gary's daughter, is going to be teaching these kids, these middle school kids, all about how to, to, to get into relationships in a healthy level, to, to not take bad relationships, to not take abuse, right. to avoid toxic people. Absolutely. We want to teach kids as early as possible so they develop good uh, track records and good plans and, and good habits in, in their relationships. Yeah. So if you know middle school students, if you, if you want to invite them, tell them about this awesome event this Tuesday. Or if you have any questions, give me a call at the office tomorrow or Tuesday, and we'll let you know more about it. And our Celebrate Recovery group is meeting right here at Fellowship Church every single Wednesday. Uh, we meet at 6 o'clock at 4.30, grief group meets. And then, um, and then at 6 o'clock, they feed you food out there in the foyer before you come in here for some awesome time of music as well as testimonies before you break into small groups. So if you or anybody you know is struggling, struggling with any kind of hurts, hang-ups, or if you're just wanting to get closer to the Lord, if you're wanting to de develop a closer walk with the Lord, come on out on Wednesday for this awesome service. And women's prayer breakfast is coming up on Saturday. So please, ladies, sign up on your way out tonight so we have an accurate head count for food. It's a great, great time. It's, it's coming up on Saturday. You'll have most of your day. They, they got you here on time. But you will be blessed with some great testimony time, with a, a great meal, and just some great fel fellowship and friendship. And our, our YFF, Young Family Fellowship, this month is going to be held at Marco's Pizza next Saturday. Sunday. So, oh, Excuse me, Sunday. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, it's going to be right after the 1030 service, and we're going to be uh, you know, heading out right after the service to go over to Marco's Pizza. Pastor Gary's got something planned special for after the pizza. We're going to have a lot, a lot of fun. But please, if you know anybody um, or if you plan on coming on out, if you're a young family, please sign up today so we have enough uh, heads up for Marco's to make enough pies for everybody. And this is our town. We love Englewood, the greater Englewood area. We're so grateful you chose to be here today. But all of us were invited somehow. We found this church somehow. So we're asking you to help us get more people here so they can hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you could put on a shirt, put on a bumper sticker on your car, wear a hat, and just go out and about and live your normal life. Just do what you do, wearing fellowship gear out and about, so people will ask you questions. You can tell them the times. You can tell them where we are. Uh, we just need help getting the word out to the community. So if you don't mind doing that, check it out over here when you're exiting on the right-hand side. Uh, there's all kinds of t-shirts and hats and all kinds of fun stuff, and there's bumper stickers and magnets throughout the foyer, so please help us out. And again, we love to thank you so very much for helping us be a debt-free ministry. If you've not checked out this give2fc.com, simple way to go online and set up an online account so you can give once, weekly, monthly, however you'd like to do that. Many of you have started tithing through this website. We thank you for that. You can give right from your phone once you set this account up. And of course, that P.O. Box, we've, been ha we've had it since day one here at Fellowship Church. And we thank you for all of your notes of encouragement. And also, many of you have been uh, giving through that P.O. Box as well to support the ministry. We love and appreciate you. Hope you have an incredible rest of your day, incredible week, and enjoy the concert. Amen, by the board. Amen. Wow. That's a lot of stuff, ain't it? I just want to highlight real quick, tonight is our middle school, high school ministry meeting, but also on Tuesday night, middle school, uh, that's a ministry that uh, a nonprofit my wife leads called uh, Inglewood Community Coalition. And uh, so that is on Tuesday night at uh, whatever time it is, what is it, 530? And then next Sunday is also just, again, focusing on young families. You can have kids in the nursery all the way up through high school. You can be a college-age kid watching online. But I'm going to take you all out to uh, pizza right after church if you're a young family next Sunday. It's just a way for boom, 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 just a way to let kids know they matter. Amen? And that we're going to love a snot out of them. And it's going to be a good time. We have stuff all the time for kids, and we're excited about that. Are you all ready to hear some bluegrass? All right, come on. I see something poking its head out the curtain right there. Oh, yeah, that's the big bass guitar right there. Look at that thing. Come on, bring that monstrosity out here. Now, we're going to go country on you. Y'all ready or not? Say, come on. Here we go. There's another crowd here today. Amen. Good to see you. Larry Stevenson Band this morning. Give him a big welcome today from Fellowship Church. Thank you. What we reap, we must sow. We are judged by the work that we do here below. We are judged by God who can see us within. One who sent his son to die on the cross for our sins. You can go to church on Sunday and shake the preacher's hand. Sing songs about hereafter in that blessed promised land. But if your brother falls by the wayside of life, you've got to lift him up and help him on his way. From the table as they fell I'd rather be like Lazarus When his short life was o'er I would dwell with my Savior In that sweet forevermore You can go to church on Sunday And shake the preacher's hand Sing songs about hereafter In that blessed promised land But if your brother 
falls by the wayside of life We've got to lift him up and help him on his way People as I go from day to day Who wouldn't stop to help a brother If he fell by the way They are blinded by their riches Or their fortune and fame Was a wiser man in day Who said these things were all in vain You can go to church on Sunday And shake the preacher's hand Sing songs about hereafter In that blessed promised land But if your brother falls by the wayside of life you've got to lift him up and help him on his way Stepping with Jesus to that home above Through every trial you were safely led Press on, old pilgrim, there is joy ahead Press on, press on, pilgrim, old pilgrim, old pilgrim My life, he must be led, must be led Sing, 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 sing keep shouting, keep shouting, keep shouting Glory is just ahead Love shining here below Trusting the one from whom all blessings flow Though I am with you are the words he said Press on, old pilgrim, there is joy ahead Press on, press on, old pilgrim, old pilgrim My life it must be led, must be led Singing, keep singing, keep shouting, keep shouting Glory is just ahead seems long. Jesus can turn your sadness into song. His wings eternal are above you spread. Press on, old pilgrim, there is joy ahead. Press on, press on, pilgrim, oh pilgrim, my life it must be led. Singing, sing, shouting, keep shouting, glory is just ahead. Singing, sing, shouting, Glory is just ahead. I break the heart. Thank you. Oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder. Consider all the worlds our hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the roaring thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul.
With shouts of acclamation To take me home What joy shall fill my heart And then I shall bow In humble adoration My God, how great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then. Sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! Thank you. Oh my goodness, that's a nice welcome. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for for having us back. We were here almost a year ago, I think it was, and just had a, a glorious time, and uh, we've been looking forward to it. And uh, thank you, thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. We appreciate it, and I hope you'll enjoy a little bit of bluegrass gospel music this morning. That's all we know what to do with. So anyway, it's all right. It fell on the bass. He's originally from New Jersey. And I don't know nothing about none of this because I've never asked and I don't want to know, but he grew up in Berea, Kentucky. So look at him. Can't you tell? That's Andy Brown on the bass. Right there is Andy. This guy was with us last year. He's great. He's from originally from New Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he makes his home around Asheville, North Carolina, with his with his bride and lovely child, lo lovely children. That's Nick Dauphiné on the guitar. And then there's the banjo player. He's from Kansas makes his home also around Asheville, North Carolina. And he's a good one. That's Derek Vaden on the five-string banjo. Tells me that I only thought I got saved He tells me what a fool I have been But when my mind goes back to that old bench where I prayed I know that I was born again Born again, free from sin I'm happy night and day Makes me shout My faith has grown 
their eyes on every hand. But then I steal away in prayer. He answers my plea, my only need. He understands.
Thank you. Oh, what a great song that is, written by my longtime friend and a great gal and a great songwriter who's also friends with Jerry Sally, have written a lot of songs together. Donna Ulysses and her husband Rick Stanley wrote that wonderful song. It's on one of our CDs out there, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that little tune. Let's pick the pace up just a little bit. I know y'all like that a lot here. And, uh, oh, this is, a, this is an old one goes way back. We've been doing it recently, and uh, we'll see if we can't... Uh, Get it in gear here this morning with a good banjo kickoff from Derek Vaden. All right, Derek. Well, I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Coming for the came me home. A band of angels coming after me. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry. Coming for to carry me home. Well, if you get for to carry me home Tell all my friends that I'm a-coming to Coming for to carry me home Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry Coming for to carry me home Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry Coming for to carry me home yeah. Sometimes down, coming for to carry me home. But still, my soul is heavenward bound, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry, coming for to carry me home. Coming for to carry me home Swing low, swing low, sweet cherry Coming for to carry me home Are you enjoying the Larry <laughs> Stevenson band? Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead and get up on your feet. Come on, you need it. You need some blood flowing. You sit there with that kind of music, your head's gonna pop. Come on, man. Yeah, thank the Lord for him one more time. Come on, praise the Lord. I'm going to sing a song with you, all right? Come on. We're just all going to do it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. And right after this song, we'll have this morning's offering. We appreciate you giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship. Everything you see... It's all been done debt free. Can we thank the Lord? Come on, let's praise the Lord. He gets all the credit. Okay? And we did it with cheerful gifts without making you feel like garbage if you don't give. We're just not going to do that here. Never have, never will. Got it? We give because we love the Lord. We give because we are grateful to the Lord. We give because we are happy to give. So if you can be part of that today, we welcome you to give. And God's going to take care of us. Whatever comes in, it'll be fine. Because God's been good to me all these years. Amen. I grew up, how many grew up like me with nothing? Let me see some hands. Okay. How many grew up in a rough home, a really, really hard home? All right. That's me. Okay. So, so just money don't bother me. Amen. God's been good to me my whole life. Say that with me. God's been my whole life. When I cussed him, he was good to me. He should have took me out. Boom. Amen. But he loved me and he had mercy on me. Amen. So that's why we give because we love the Lord and people need the Lord in our area. They're coming by the droves, man. Who's going to tell them? We are. Amen. We're going to love on them. So that's what your giving goes to. But also next week, all the offering goes to the new kids wing we're building. All of it. So yeah, thank, come on. Thank the Lord. That's exciting. Debt free. 
That's crazy. I figured, you know, if we'd have borrowed money, just a second, you all right? I'm good. Here's some business. So here's some business talk. Here's country talk. You know, if you had a mortgage on a building like this, say at $5 million, $6 million, something like that, it'd be at least that, your mortgage payment would be about $30,000 a month. And over about 30 years, that's about 30, 360 brand new Toyota pickup trucks sitting out there. <laughs> it pays to do stuff debt free, don't it? Amen. Say, amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to build that kids' wing the same way. Last month, I think $25,000 came in on that offering at the end of the month. That's like a brand new Toyota pickup. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing. We don't pay any interest to nobody. Got it? Yes or no? And you'd do wise to do the same thing in your life. If you can get there, get there. Amen? You hear me? So, that new kids' wing will be awesome with a prayer garden. That's next week. But today's offering goes to help meet the needs of our ministry. We take care of these guys. They're kind. And when they come to church on Sunday morning, they're grateful. But we give them a nice love gift from you. That frees you up then to go out there and buy a CD from them. Amen? And take that home. And that helps them. But the best thing they get coming here is to be able to have lunch with me. <laughs> at Farlow's after this. Yeah, and my wife, my wife, it's just going to be me because she knows when I go there, I'm going to want to, I'm going to want to eat a lot and spend time with you. Your wife's not coming? She's not. Just going to meet with the boys today. Oh. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> Hush your mouth now. Quit it. <laughs> Let's go. Amazing grace. I don't know what he's going to do. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace. Come on. Twas grace that. fun playing with the band. They get far lows, but I at least usually get one song out of it, whether it's Jerry or anybody. I'm going to sing as long as I can still do it. I'm going to jump up here and sing with the band. Amen. And I appreciate it. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work. Y'all have a couple of more songs for us. Yeah. We'd appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Pastor Steve, would you come and pray for us? I love Pastor Steve Cooper. He's one of many pastors. I had three pastors this morning around me this morning. And Pastor Urban, he just passed Pastor Urban over there. Come on, Pastor Steve. But I'm so blessed to have ministers who've given their life to preach the gospel. And you know what? They get old too, don't you? 
We get tired too, don't we, Pastor? Yes, we do. And they retire too, but they never really retire. They nope. come down here and serve the Lord. That's right. Amen. He's always there for me when I need him, encouraging, but to preach God's word. And you really don't have to worry. If say something happened to me or I was sick for a spell, guys, we got some pretty, pretty powerful senior pastors around here. But it does me so, it's so humbling to me, guys. And I say it, it's so humbling to have men of God that will come and sit under my ministry. Because I know me, guys. I mean, I mean, I'm crazy. So for them to do that, it's so, it helps me and keeps me on track. But I just love you. I love your wife. I love your family. And I love that you have, uh, you've just, I knew your daddy. And he's in heaven. And mama's still living? Yep. How old now? 92. 92. <laughs> and I love her. If there's one lady you never want to say a bad thing about me to, it's her. She'll clean your head right off your shoulders. <laughs> Won't she? Yeah. Me or him, right? Me or you, baby. We're her sons. But thank you for giving today. I hope you've had a good morning. I'm going to preach in just a bit. A couple of more songs, but pray for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the joy of being in the house of the Lord. It's like a foretaste of what will be ours in the future when all the body of Christ is together. And we have the privilege of bringing glory to your name. We thank you today, Lord, for the group that's here. We thank you for our pastor who's going to preach your word. Thank you for the gifts that have been given. Multiply them, Lord. And bless those who have given with a great blessing, Lord. We thank you today and love you. We do love you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Amen. Y'all be seated. Enjoy another song or two. Praise the Lord. Then you're going to have to put up with me. Not long, though. There are many things that I recall when I was just a child. Some things make me sad and there are things that make me smile. There's my mama and my daddy and the new grounds I have home. In the old home place where I was born in a church house down the road. Well, I have precious memories of the days when I was young. And I remember very well those good old songs we sung. Like pass me not in precious name and Jesus hold my hand. And when my spirit needs a lift, I'll sing them through again. Love lifted me softly and tenderly. Love lifted me just as. Kids would sleep on pallets on the floor Sometimes during singing We would sneak outside the door We used to hear shouts and joyous noise They made unto the Lord And when they sung amazing grace Their voices seemed to soar Love lifted me Softly and Thank you. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. I always have to give a big shout out to my buddy Jerry Sally. And uh, Jerry, uh, been here many times. He's got family in the area, a house in the area. And uh, great guy, great songwriter, and a longtime friend. We've written several songs together. 
I'm no songwriter when it comes to a guy like Jerry Sally. So we look for him for great songs, and this is one of them. And uh, we appreciate him. Jerry, if you're listening, hey, Jerry Sally. Here's a good song right here that he uh, wrote and gave it to us a number of years ago. One of our CDs out there, How High Is That Mountain? Can't find your way out of there Not so low for God to hear you pray That's how low that valley is Unbelievers who were lost But not so why the faithful cannot cross That's how why that river is you appreciate them today. Come on. Come on. Amen. Thank the Lord. Sing one more verse of that. One more time. Come on, church. One more How verse. High come on. Come on. Is that mountain too high to climb all by yourself? If you try, you're sure to fail. Not too high to cross for Jesus' help. That's how high that's how hard that mountain is. Amen. Right here. Amen. While you're standing, we have a local artist. Uh, Jim and James Scott, and he's uh, like a court oh. artist, you know, is in the courtroom and, and does, he does me a lot, you know, sermons and guests, but he did this for y'all, I think he did it last year, and he may have, you may have a print of this, but, but now it's framed, and I just think, how many, how many churches you go to where you have a resident artist who watches you do your thing and just does it right there in front of you? And so that's a gift from him, a gift from him. I don't know if Jim's here, where you at, Jim, are you here? He was in the first service, but anyway, that's our gift, which is really his gift, because I didn't give a thing for it. That's a blessing to him. One more time, let, let Larry and the band know. Amen. God bless you. I'll preach and I'll see you. Praise the Lord. Y'all be seated. Amen. Come on. Amen. What a good time, huh? 
I would pity most pastors having to get up after that and try to preach. But it doesn't bother me a bit. I can handle it. Amen. I can handle it. I'm just going to be me. These boys right here made me feel like I'm at home in the country. You know? Some great music. Some of the best high tenor you'll ever hear in your life. Right there. You might not know that, but I'm telling you. Check it out. That's just incredible. And the harmonies right there, phenomenal. And I don't think you could have picked out a mistake in the instruments at all. It's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Man, so we were blessed. And uh, who knows? Might see them on the Grand Old Opera again or something. Just turn your TV on. You just never know. Amen. Good folks right here. Let's go to the Word of God this morning. I'm going to take time, but not a lot of time. About 15 minutes. I know. Breathe. It can happen. It can happen. It can happen. I'm in a series called Last Days, Best Days. Why are you calling it that? Well, it's just what I wanted to call it. I've done a lot of sermons and talks over the years on end times. I'm amazed how few do that. It doesn't make me better than somebody else. That's from you telling me this. Many of you come up to me and say, you know, I had one lady recently said, I don't read the book of Revelation because it scares me, you know. And several have said that to me over the years. And others say, you know, my pastor back home or wherever never preaches the book of Revelation. We have no idea. Well, it's, it doesn't make me an expert or a pro, but it's in the Word of God. If it's in the Word of God, we ought to take a stab at it. Amen. So, and I've done it for years. I'm in this series now, and uh, we'll do several messages still on this series. But today I'm going to take a little bit of a, whoo, a little bit of a break for you. Because the first horse, we saw, we saw several messages, then we got into the four horsemen. Can you say four horsemen? Of the apocalypse. Of the apocalypse. So we did that. We did the first two horses, the white horse. It appears in Revelation chapter number 6. You can also see this in Matthew 24, Matthew 25. And you can see the other parts of the book of Revelation as well. But we hit the first horse, the white horse, which I believe represents the Antichrist and Antichrist spirit in the last days. And then last week was the red horse, which represents dissension and war. And so we're taking a break today because we're talking about last days. We see last days stuff all around us right now in our, in our world. And, you know, all, you might, what do you believe, Pastor? Well, I believe we're living in the last days. That's what I believe. But I know for sure it's your last days and it's my last days. Now, what do I mean by that? Guys, I mean... A lot of us got more life behind us than in front of us as far as years, years. But some are young, but even that, if you measure it, it's not a lot in the scope of eternity. So, guys, last days are important. You might say, why do you, I don't do this all the time. Well, why are you doing it now? Well, I think it, it, we should do it because look at our world. How are we going to answer some of the questions today? The world looks like it's spinning out of control and falling apart. Not everywhere, but in a lot of places. Next week's message will be the black horse, famine, economic devastation. Is it out of the realm of possibility to think of a great economic collapse in our world? No, many of you are saying it's more real today and possible maybe than ever before. Before we weren't hooked together with one system, basically. We're finding out how truckers in Canada can have their bank accounts freezed. You understand that, yes or no? You know, and to be honest with you, Trudeau would have been a smarter man if he'd have tried to have a relationship with these truckers and start to realize, you know, they are the one that put the food on your table. They're the one that brings that. Some people you don't want to pick a fight with. You know what I'm saying? How hard is this? And I know it's affected businesses and things like that, but wait till the truckers quit trucking and try your business. I'm just saying there's a way to talk to people. You know, it's funny. Other places are ending mandates and things like that. But, but the point is, we live in a precarious situation now in our world. Amen? Yes or no? So next week's message, not today. This is just a commercial. <laughs> the Black Horse. I wish you'd be here and get somebody to come on with you or check online. Whatever. But we'll be teaching that whole passage, maybe a 45-minute message today, about 15 minutes max. Let's go with this message. A breather. It's a breather. Instead of complaining and whining, how about shining? How about making your, your last days the best days? Amen. That's what I'm talking about this morning. How about having a good attitude? Yes or no? Instead of getting with your favorite people and talking about how crappy the world is. Is that going to help anybody? Yes or no? It's reality. I get that. Many times it is, okay? But people need hope. People need light in their life. People need Jesus Christ. People didn't stop going to hell. Got it? 
and they need us to bless them and encourage them and to live as victorious Christians before them. So this message is about that. There's one passage in the Bible. There's probably others, but this is a, this is a big doozy right here. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Can you say that with me? 1 Thessalonians chapter number So it's 1 Thessalonians chapter what? Chapter what? 1 Thessalonians. Okay. It is one chapter, no matter what you're going through in your life, if you will listen right now just for a few minutes, it will help you make the best day out of any bad situation. It's just one whole chapter, and I'm going to break it down for you. It's not going to take all day. A lot of them are short verses, but they make sense. And you can always go and find it. So let's get us some best days in these last days help. We start in chapter number 5, 1 Thessalonians, verse 1. But of the times, or the last days, and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Paul writing. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, the return of the Lord, the last days, the judgment of the Lord is going to come, sit with me, as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace, we saw that, Antichrist, peace treaty, then all out war breaks loose. We see right now, who knows? That's what's sad. You never know who's telling the truth anymore. You don't know. You don't know if, 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 if even our own government at times is playing games with us and uh, using a situation. It's sad that I stand up here and say that. It's sad because war is a serious thing. But we hear they're going to war, they're, going to, they're not going to whatever. But now it's not, little, it's not little games. It's Russia who's hooked with China, who's hooked with Iran. And it can be a mess. You, hope, you know this, right? It's just Ukraine. What does it matter? I get it. I wish we wouldn't go to war all over the place. Got it? But I tell you what, it's a powder keg. And things could blow up and be a problem quick. All right? So when you hear, when, when, when they shall say peace and safety, then read that with me. And sudden destruction will come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, that's a pretty, I mean, I thought you were going to be cheerful. Well, he had to set the table. He just set the table in verses 1 through 3 saying, you know this is going to happen one day. God's not a liar. His word is going to come to pass. Okay, so let me give you some help, Paul says, how to make your last days your best days. Guys, this will be good for you no matter what it is. In your family, any, any trial or struggle you're going through, let me tell you, right now what we're about to give you will help you. Sure a lot better than a bottle of pills, I'll tell you right now. You're going to get something from the Lord. Ready? Here we go. Let's pull up the table, the chair at the table. Let's eat a little bit. So how do I do it? Number one, say it with me out loud. Number one, make sure you are a but brethren, verse 4, I'm going to go through the whole chapter. It's not hard. We're rolling now. But brethren, you're not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. My question to you is, or are you? Are you a Christian today? What do I mean? Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Not I go to church. That makes you a churchin. <laughs> Got it or not? I'm a good person, and I guess you're a good one. Are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Christ? Are you a believer that he died on the cross, he rose from the dead? Do you believe all other ways are dead ends? And he's the only way, truth, and life, and the only way to God the Father, like the Bible says. Make sure you're a Christian. You want your, best, your last days to be your best days? Make sure you're a Christian. And by the way, today could be your last day. Just in two weeks, I lost two men in this church. They're in heaven now. But one of them was Hager Martin House a couple of weeks ago. And I liked him so much. I didn't know him as well as the other gentleman, but I knew Hagar for years. He was a good man. I liked him because he was, uh, he'd buy and sell things. And I sort of liked that. My favorite price is free. 
But I don't like necessarily like people to give me stuff. I'd rather find it, you know. But Hager was that kind of guy with, with uh, cars, different things. And so I just loved his happy spirit. And then another man we lost to heaven gained him was Gene Prakowski. I've known Gene for 35 years probably, 30, 35 years, him and Ann. And they love me just like a son. Boy, that's great loss, you know what I mean? We never know, guys. We never know if today is our last day. Y'all get that, right? Yes or no? You think you got the cat by the tail? I got me shot. I got my this, I got my that. I'm not saying don't take care of your health and other things, but guys, reality is you can just be walking along. Gene came back from a big anniversary. He was at the Sarasota airport. Collapse at the airport. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. Not a bad way to go, is it? Sad for family. But don't you want to make your last days your best days? Well, that, that's the big granddaddy of them all is this point. Number one, make sure you're a Christian. Did we get it? You don't have to leave lost. If you leave lost today, listening to me or online or on the radio, listen, you made that choice. I look at you guys, young guys and stuff. I was 16, 17 years old when I put my faith in Christ. We just never know what a day is going to bring. So make sure that you know Christ is your Savior. Because when you do, that day doesn't have to overtake you as a thief, does it? Yes or no? You're children of the light when you know Christ. You're children of the day. We're not of night nor of darkness. You see how hopeful that is now? Yes or no? Let's roll with the tide. Here we go. Come on. Number two, say it with me. Watch and expect Jesus to return. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. Let us watch. When we see our world and things that are happening, guys, it should encourage us. I don't know if this is the last. I'm not sure. I feel it. But we're told that when we look for the Lord's return, we purify ourselves. When I'm looking that I want to see Jesus and I'm going to be with him soon, it helps me with my choices I make in my life. Did I lose you on that? So, watch man, be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. Those that are drunken, be drunk in the night. Guys, we're people of the day. We're people of the light. Jesus Christ said, you're the light of the what? You're a city set on a what? Amen. Be that. Be that. Number three, how do I make my last days my best days? Say that one with me. Put on the whole armor of God. It's time, guys. Put on the breastplate of what? Well, I'm a good person. I go to church. Never killed nobody. That ain't faith. That's bull. Faith is I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe I matter. I'm not garbage. He died on a cross for me. He rose from the dead for me. I didn't come from a big bang. He made me fearfully and wonderfully. And he came to rescue me and to love me. I am somebody. Put on that. Believe that. Amen. That's a breastplate, baby. You'd be surprised how much your relationships with the future is going to help you when you have faith and know that Jesus Christ loves you and you're not garbage. If you think you're garbage, you'll probably get hooked up with garbage. Did I lose you? Put on that breastplate of faith and what? Love. Love in the last days. Love on people. Reach out to people. Had the, had the ladies today laughing at me because I had a line of women over here I was hugging. <laughs> then I hugged you too, didn't I? You know why? This might be the only day I get to do that with you. If something happened to me or you, I wish either you or I would say, well, I hugged her the other day. Last time I saw her. What's wrong with that? Yes or no? Love people. Last days. Put on that armor. Helmet. The hope of salvation, that's not the hope so. It's the confidence of salvation. Know that, guys. So put on faith, love, and what? Hope. That's what we do in the last days. Say that with me. Diligently seek and reach out to who? For God's not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be nice if the world could hear that? God doesn't want you to go to hell. He loves you. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. 
Sin's not going to enter into heaven. We must put our faith in Christ to go to heaven. You might not like the plan where you're a nut. Free eternal life's a pretty good plan. Amen. And it's God's way, not your way. Amen. What a message to tell people. Amen. God loves you. He died for us. Yes or no? Tell people this. Have that message in your heart. Don't just shove it down their throat. No. But as you're putting on that faith and that hope and that love, doors will open as you share Christ with other people. Am I making sense up here? Makes sense to me. Who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should do what? We're going to live together with him. Is that good news? That's what I'm telling you. How do you make these last days your best days? Another one. Say it with me. Be a what? Be an encourager. I, got, I usually get awesome letters. I got a letter this week. If you're listening, you're probably not because it was an ugly letter. Told me how much in the letter. Oh, we just loved Chris Golden. And we love, love the people. So they set me up to tell me, but we didn't like you at all. And it really got me down for a little bit. It did. How could that not get you down? If that's you, I'm not saying you wrote the letter. I'm just saying if that's the kind of person you are, you're a disaster. Amen. And you're going to live your life like that, being critical of people, putting people down. This is not the time to do that. We need encouragement. How many would say that we need I don't do everything right. I don't say everything right. I talk funny. I say crap. How many ever been through some of that in your life? Some crap. That's why I say it. Okay? But we need to be an encourager in these last days. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. Edify. The word means build up yourselves, even as we also do. That's what we do here at church. Yes or no? Let's get together so I can pick you apart and tear you down. And you wonder why you don't have any friends? Don't come to our friend day on Tuesdays where the people are trying to be nice and do that to them. Church is crazy. Y'all know that, right? Some of the meanest people I've ever met in my life have been in church. This is a positive. Let's do it this way. We beseech you, brethren, to know those that labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you. What does that mean? You're, we're to be an encouragement to one another. Those people giving donuts back there and things like that. Well, the coffee's cold. How about you shut up? How about that? Yeah. I mean, come on, right? Yes or no? That's another we reason we do everything free around here. And uh, uh, pull that rug out from under you right quick. <laughs> Come on, guys. Amen. Do we understand making our last days the best days? Would this kind of teaching help your marriage? Help your friendships? Help you in the workplace? Why not? That's what the Bible says. Be an encourager to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Instead of arguing with the guy that's running the Bible study on Monday or the lady on Monday night or something. They're not perfect people, but they don't have to be berated. Got it? Yes or no? You come off as a know-it-all. Ooh, I'm ugly today, aren't I? It's that country music that got me going. I exhort you, brethren. Now watch. Warn those that are unruly. That's what I'm doing right now. Comfort the feeble-minded. I'm doing it. Support the weak. Be patient to all men. Amen. Had somebody locally this week attack me. wonder how I felt after they did that with their words, calling me a false prophet and a false teacher. Saying loudly so I can hear them that all, all churches are about is money. Is that how we run this place, yes or no? 
you're going to get it, man. You're going to get it. I'm going to get it. It's going to happen. What are we going to do? Be an encourager. Dust off the feet if you have to. There's probably a lost person that would love to hear from you. Because usually the ones that get in my face are believers. Is that sad or what? I never know what I'm going to say. <laughs> it's okay. I'll stand by what I've said. Say that with me. What else can I do in the last day? Say it with me. That ain't in the Bible. Well, wait a minute. I ain't skipped a verse yet. What's that say? Rejoice. Plain English. Be happy. Yeah, but I can't be happy. Our government's doing this, or this is happening, or, or you know, this is happening in my family. And Guys, I'm going to tell you. Had a lady come up to me this morning. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Incredible. Now, I hardly ever get too much criticism. I just threw that out there because it was fitting where I was preaching. But this is usually what I get, sweet, kind, loving, awesome. A lady and her husband in our church came, and a few years ago they lost their son. Their young son died, was killed. And she said, I chose to be happy. And people would say, how can you be happy? And so she said, I had to, I had to find happiness that my son didn't suffer that immediately he was taken to heaven I, you, you, I couldn't do what, that's the truth, that's exactly what she said to me, and she said or that he wasn't left in a coma and a vegetable for the rest of his life you want to know hard times have your son taken and try to find happiness and we can't find it, say we can find happiness say that with him, we can what and it'll be a light to our town, light to our community. Be happy, man. Last days. How can I make it my best days? Say that with me. Pray all the time. What's it say? Does it say that? What's that mean? Attitude of prayer. You know, prayer ain't always asking for stuff. Prayer is also saying, thank you. Amen or oh me. Prayer is getting up in the morning and go, whoo, I get another day. And I think people that can't be happy in Florida down here along where we live, you are pitiful people. <laughs> I mean, really. How many is visiting right now from out of town for a few days? Let me see some hands. I love the Minnesota guy. He's mad. He's mad. You know why? Because there's a big snowstorm and he had to reschedule his flight to leave today. That's what he should be. You see what I'm saying? He wants to be here. That's how we should be because we are here. Amen. Come on. Be happy. We're talking about last days. You don't hear this on the news, do you? How, say that one with me. Give what? I'm just going through the verses. In everything, do what? You don't have to be a genius to write this message. For this is the will of God. What's the will of God for me? I want the will of God. It's the will of God for you is for you to be a thankful person. In everything. Every, yeah, praise the Lord. In everything. In everything. And there's plenty to be thankful for. Amen? Keep looking. What's that one? Be what? Quench not the spirit. That's what that means. To be obedient to the Lord. We know you're not perfect, I'm not perfect. But seek in these last days, the last days of your life, the last days that we're perhaps living in, seek to be an obedient follower of Jesus Christ so that you can have the Spirit of God in your life. Uh-oh, somebody standing up. You all right, buddy? Pete's okay? Good, 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 good. There we go. We're all right. Hang in here with me. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay? Hey, we never know what a day will bring, do we? Somebody is it like an issue. I want to make sure I'm dealing with it. So quench not the spirit. Be obedient. These are things we're learning. How about this one? Say that one with me. Why did I get up here and preach today? We had the band. Because the word of God matters here. 
I'm, I'm smart. I don't have to be no hour and a half. I get that. Or 45. I get that. It's brief. I'm almost done. It's okay because I, I want to go eat, okay? I want to be happy. <laughs> What's that mean? Despise not prophesying. That's not saying like you see TV preachers, oh, let's God, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. That's not what that means. That word literally means despise not the preaching of God's word. If somebody's a false prophet and saying false garbage, you ought to despise that stuff. Do you hear me? But the preaching of God's word? Don't do that. Be encouraged. Appreciate that we live in a country, live in a community. Have a place like this so we can come and hear the word of God. That'll make you, that'll make you a better person. Yes or no? Amen? Live like this. Say that with me. In the last days. Keep holding on. Prove all things. Say that with me. Hold fast that which is. Hold on, baby. Yeah, but it's getting rough. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on to what's good in your life. Say that with me. This is just how can you be happy and do your best in the last days. Make best out of bad. Here we go. Say that with me. Do your what? Yeah. Scriptures abstain from all appearance of evil. Do your best. Do your best to live like that. To work at that. You'll be a happier, more positive person. And have a relationship that's open and free and clean and clear between you and the Lord. Amen? Hadn't skipped a scripture yet, I don't think. First Thessalonians what? Pop it up. Oh, say it with me. Remember that God is. I think that's the last one. Verses 23 and 24. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Here it is again. Unto the what? Coming of the Lord. So we started out with the return of the Lord. And we're finishing up with the return of the Lord. Say that verse with me. It's an awesome verse. Faithful is he that calls you who also will. Know that God's faithful. Know that in these last days or your last days. This is a great way to live your life. Let's look at them all one last time. Pop them up, Raj. How do I make the last days my best days? Make sure you're a Christian. Watch and expect Jesus to return. Put on the whole armor of God. Diligently seek and reach out to unbelievers. Be an encourager. Put your stinking pen down. Unless you're going to use it to bless somebody. The word bless means well words. Why don't you speak life into somebody instead of death into somebody? Y'all hear me or not? Be happy. Pray all the time. That spirit of prayer. Give thanks for everything. Be obedient. Honor the preaching of God's word. Keep holding on. Do your very best. And remember, God is good and God is faithful. Let's thank the Lord for his word. I thought it was a good word today. Boo! I liked it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together. If I get an ugly letter on that one, you know it was you. No, I'm just playing with you today, guys. Amen. I'm the kind of guy that when I used to play ball and stuff, the team that whooped our butt was the team I liked to play the most. So it's actually those kind of notes that get me riled up. Amen? Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, for loving us today. Thank you for letting us be in your house today to hear your word, a good word today. Thank you, Lord, as we heard the singing. I know for me, as I understand a, a little bit of the Bible, I heard, I heard the word of God all through a lot of their songs. So I was blessed when I just heard them. So, Lord, help this message to find good ground. Not only for the times in which we live, they seem perilous, but, Lord, in our marriages, we know this would help. In our friendships, 
our workplace, when we go out to restaurants, at the grocery store, as we're sitting at home, perhaps alone, thinking like this would be a whole lot better way to live our life. So, Lord, burn it in our heart today. Help us to always know you wrote it there. 1 Thessalonians 5, it's ours for the picking. We can go and look at it any time. Help us to eat it up with a spoon today. Chew on it, mull it over, get it inside of us. And Lord, I think of that one, as I'm sure you are, that one or many that are in this room right now are watching online or on radio, and they're lost. Their faith is not in you and you alone. Lord, I pray today they'll not leave that way. I pray today that every one of us, every one of us will make sure that our faith is in you, Jesus Christ. Cause that to happen, Lord. We know that we must be humble. We must be willing. But Lord, I pray right now with sincerity, people will nail their Christian faith, their belief in Jesus Christ. They will nail that so firmly down right now. We don't know if these are the last days or if it's our last day. But we know one thing, without you, hell's coming. Have mercy on us, we pray today. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed. Can I lead you in a prayer today where you'll put your faith in Jesus Christ? What I'm asking you to do today is to say no to everything else. No to church attendance. I'm not saying it's not helpful, it's good for sure it is. It's not going to get you to heaven. Being a good person, there's none good, no, not one. When it gets right down to it, you're still a sinner, man. Or giving money, giving money is going to get you to heaven. All that's a big lie. It's pride. How about we try this track, humility? How about that one? Let's stay over on that side. Would you humble yourself today and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? My drunk mama did. I did. Hellraiser. What stops you today? You don't know if this is your last day. Would you nail that with me right now? Let's pray together. Be sincere in your gut. Don't need some fancy prayer. We need honesty. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And Jesus, I want you to know that I believe in you. I don't understand it all. I don't. But I choose by faith to put my trust in you. That you're not lying to me, but you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Jesus, today, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead for me, for me. I believe I matter that much to you. I'm not garbage. I'm not a mistake. And so, Lord, today I put my faith in you. And again, Lord, best I know how, I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for letting me be in church today where I could hear once again, that you love me. Save me today, Lord. Write my name down in that Lamb's book of life. My faith is in you, and I mean it from, from my gut. No game play this time. In Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many would say with a lifted hand, I'm not here to embarrass you, I'm here to encourage you. How many would say with a lifted hand, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you today. I meant that today. I nailed it today. Heaven is flat out my home. Can I see some hands? <laughs> I did that today. Period. That is me. God bless you. God bless you. I can't see all of you. That wasn't the point. It was your hand to go up so he sees you. <laughs> Amen. You see you. Amen. Come on. Lord, bless us as we go our way. We love you for loving us first. Help us remember this message. May it make a change in us and help us remember it's in the Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We can go back and check it out. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Let's thank the Lord for a good day today. Come on. Amen. Strong. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all be good. Go have a great afternoon. Amen.